So I see we're back to the penis on this show. Okay. Let's get into this review. Guys, I was so excited to see Mr. Ibis and Anubis again. I really like those characters. I like a lot of characters that I feel like we have not been seeing enough of and maybe they're holding them for season two, but they didn't know they got a season two until halfway through the season. So I don't know, but I was just really excited to see uh, the two of them and I'm hoping that we get to uh, know a bit more about them in season two that we'll uh, get into more of their backstory because we only got into a few of the old gods and any new guys? No, just Old God's backstory this season. So I'm hoping, but we'll see. So when Anubis is not transporting people to the other side, he's working in a funeral home, beating down the faces of dead bodies. Has this been explained? Because I'm just like, wait a minute. I realized that Anubis was putting on Laura's makeup that time, but I thought they were all doing that because they were working with, uh, Mr. Wednesday and they are. I didn't know that his job is that he works in the funeral home when he's not being the reaper. This needs to be explained more. If you do know more about this, please write down in the comment section because I was just like, oh, wait a minute. So he actually works there? I thought he was just helping out. Thank you, American gods. I mean, it had to take a show on stars to really put the truth out there. Irish people were not slaves. They were indentured servants. Two totally different, uh, levels of the spectrum like one was you know you working off a debt to society to the law to the person that you owe money to and the other was genocide guys big difference big difference if you're like me and you were wondering why in the hell laura got another full episode here's the tea or the backstory to that so brian fuller had another actress in mind to play essie in this episode However, as they were writing it out, they thought that her life parallel, you know, Laura's miserable life, to be uh, quite honest with you. So he decided, he was just like, you know what, maybe let's see if Emily Browning is down to play this role as well. So before he even was able to say anything, when he went to meet with Emily Browning, she, she like blurted out that she wanted to play uh, Essie in this story. She was just like, I feel like I should, like I need to play this. So that's why Laura is playing Essie um, or Emily Browning, the actress is playing Essie. They are not the same person. They are not like family or anything like that. They just felt like this actress uh, should play her as well because she has such a similar life to Laura, but there's not really any other connection besides their uh, parallel lives. I've always thought that red hair is just such a beautiful trait that a lot of people have. And um, I've also not been surprised that a lot of red hair people uh, feel or face like some type of discrimination and bullying. Often the most beautiful things in this world are hated. So um, I don't know why I said that. I just felt like I was really in love with a uh, redheaded uh, Essie. I you know what? She was giving me brave. She was giving me brave and I love that movie, but I also really love red hair. <laughs> so although for a lot of people, this episode was a whole lot of Laura, this was actually Matt Sweeney's Coming to America Tell. And it starts with uh, this little Irish girl named Essie who uh, has a strong belief in like leprechauns and fairies and trolls and things of that nature that were not bad, but they only became bad when you when the stories and the tales were brought to America. But we focus on Essie who has this strong belief in uh, leprechauns and uh, she leaves out offerings to them throughout her life, like whatever, like wherever she goes in different stages. And you see that in different stages of her life, when she forgets to give offerings to this leprechaun, Mad Sweeney, her life goes around. Starting off, I think she was like a handmaiden to like this wealthy family. And she ended up having sex with the son of the wealthy family. And uh, he promises to marry her and he gives her a locket. Because she's so enamored with this guy and involved in uh, him in this relationship, she forgets to do a lot of her offerings. And because she's not, you know, as focused on, you know, be praising or giving offerings unto the gods like she normally is she falls into mischief every time some type of darkness always overtakes her and one is one of the handmaidens being jealous that she has this locket she tells the mistress of the house that she's stealing the mistress confronts the son because essie is just like y your son that i was banging actually gave that to me he denies it she is then thrown into a uh, jail and then she is sent to America to work as an indentured servant because that's what they would do back in the day um, to, um, poor, to, to poor Europeans. If you did something that was wrong and you didn't have the money to get out of it, they would send you to indentured servitude to America. This was before um, 
my people were brought here forcibly. While traveling on the ship to go to her indentured servitude, she falls for the captain, but it seems like the captain falls for her and she just maybe used her vagina to get out of these situations. He actually marries her and takes her out of that indentured servitude. So she's not even supposed to be an indentured, she's not even an indentured servant anymore. She's now a wife of a captain. And I'm thinking this girl is living a charmed life. However, it wasn't good enough for her because she all of a sudden decides that as soon as her captain leaves, she loots the dude of all his possessions and goes and sells them. And I guess in her mind, she was thinking that, or it said that because the world treated her like a thief, she will become a thief. And so it shows her being a thief and it shows her stealing and it also shows her leaving out offerings, but then it shows her again getting caught up with the dude. And so she stops giving out the offerings because I guess when Essie's life gets good, and maybe that's a message there, when her life gets good she forgets about the gods that blessed her with this life and uh and you could say that about every religion because it's the same thing it's like uh in christianity it's like god doesn't want to give you too much because if he gives you too much you start to believe in yourself attaining these things and you forget about uh the provider so um i i that was something that i was able to pick up anyway because she's you know living his charm life now living a life that she wants without no man this entire episode is us seeing Essie go to different go through different parts of her life and seeing how the gods played in that and this guy that we're talking about is Mad Sweeney. So this is basically Mad Sweeney's coming to America tale and we meet Essie as a young girl then we meet her as um, a, a young woman and we see how um, she was in misfortune and how the gods and how Mad Sweeney was able to um, bless her with a way to get out of those situations. We see how uh, th these beliefs travel with her. Talk about how Mad Sweeney is a terrible guy because it seems like Laura's coochie or Essie's coochie has gotten her out of situations uh, quicker and faster than Matt Sweeney has ever. It doesn't, it doesn't really show his power as a God. He, it seems like all of his giftings or his blessings are through her vagina. So is her coochie a God? Like what is going on? Like he, he's not really helpful. And we get back to Matt Sweeney and Laura and Salim and we get this thing with the white buffalo and I'm just like, again are we going to get the native americans this episode or are we ever getting the native americans is this some idea that i've made up in my mind where we're just not going to get the native americans uh gods or or any part of their i mean it's america so i feel like we should they should be like a huge part of this story but they're not so anyway uh matt sweeney goes to take a piss and while he's taking a piss he starts talking to the raven and as he's talking to him, I'm just like, I knew he was still working for Odin. He's telling the Raven everything that's going on and everything that they're um, about to do. And then Laura walks up on him and he hears him. And then she uh, goes back to Salim and she's just like, you've been released. The, uh, the gods are going to Wisconsin. That's where you can go and find your gin. Matt Sweeney is pissed because he's just like, what are you doing? That was our ride. And then Laura is just like, no, I got another ride. She sees an ice cream truck and she decides that that's what they need to uh, drive to get to uh, her resurrection and Laura decides to take this ice cream truck because if you see like the flies are um, multiplying around her which means that her body is rapidly decomposing something I can't pronounce which is called the madness of Subini it's an old Irish tale about Sabini McComing who is uh, the king of Danasha I don't know how to pronounce but it it's like about Mad Sweeney he used to be a king he was uh, cursed by uh, St. Ronan and whatever this curse is, it made him go mad. And he went mad during a time of battle. So the curse cursed him to just wander the earth forever until he died. That's why he wandered off the battlefield. And he's talking about how he saw himself dying. And I guess that was the curse that he could see himself dying. So he left the battlefield and he was cursed to wander forever. So if you notice, that's why we always see Matt Sweeney walk in places. Because that's like his curse. Like he ha he's cursed to walk the land forever until his death. That's why he tells Laura that he has to be in this war. Like he tells her, I have to fight this battle. I owe a battle. And that is his, that's his guilt coming in from leaving the battlefield and leaving basically his men to die. And then he says to Laura, I've done worse. And I didn't know what that meant until I got to later in the episode. Talks about how after that he became a saint and then General Mills did the rest. Matt Sweeney has the best one-liners in this show for me. I feel like his dialogue is so hilarious. Is he this hilarious in the book? Let me know in the comment section below if you've read the book, uh, if Matt Sweeney is this much of a comical character. So right as they're having this conversation, you see the bunny again, Easter. She jumps into like the middle of the road and distracts Laura. Laura trying 
trying to avoid hitting the bunny, like makes a sharp turn. And because she's in like a huge truck, it tips over. She flies out of the window of this uh, ice cream truck. And as she flies out, the coin rips open from her body, like her stitches rips open and the coin falls out. It hits the ground. Laura hits the ground. Then we cut back to Essie and we see uh, Laura playing Essie and this poor girl marries her master. And I'm just like, what a miserable life that the both of these women have had. So now it clearly makes a lot of sense why Emily Browning will play both characters because in a sense, Essie and Laura are pretty much the same woman who has just been living these miserable lives unfulfilled. So anyway, Sweeney awakes from the accident up to Laura and he sees that her chest is open. So then he goes looking for the coin. He sees the coin, he gets elated and he starts to walk away. And as he's walking away, he starts to feel guilt. And he has like this whole thing where he's like cu cussing out in this, I don't know what this language is. He just has a full temper tantrum. And then you get a flashback and you see Matt Sweeney standing over Laura's dying body. And he looks up to the Raven and he says, it's done. So Matt Sweeney is responsible for the death of Laura because he was the car, I think that hit them or spun them out that made their car that Laura was giving homeboy head on flip. And that's what killed uh, her and Dane Cook. So Matt Sweeney was a part of this from the beginning. So Alden has been watching Laura from the beginning as we have saw in other episodes. So now it's all making sense. He's also responsible for Laura's death. What does she mean to Shadow? Because I mean, Alden has went to great lengths to keep them apart. Oh boy, Matt Sweeney puts the coin back on Laura. She comes to life, punches him in the face and she gets in the truck and she's just like, let's go. And Matt Sweeney is reluctant because he realizes what he just did. Like he didn't follow orders but he also feels responsible because then we cut back to Essie and we see her grow older as a grandmother grandmother here we go and we see her telling the tales of you know the the fairies and the leprechauns to uh, her grandchildren and because it's foreign to them this culture is foreign to them they get afraid like how we are in America like trolls are like negative in America but I guess over there in Ireland they're not they're not bad creatures so the kids are like scared by her tales so she stops telling them and then we get this uh, scene where she's like um, rocking back and forth on her porch and she dies and then Matt Sweeney appears starts speaking to her and she's just and she realizes who he is and she's just like I have no quarrel with you and he's like I have no quarrel with you you kept me alive you brought me here and you kept me alive and then he puts his hand he does this thing with the coin and he puts his hand out to her and he takes her hand and he takes her over to the other side then at that moment I realized that who you believe in is the one who crosses you over to the other side. That was a really, really sweet ending to this episode. It was a really sweet moment that just, you know, got my little heart going because I told you how I feel about my grandmother. But it was just, I don't know, it was just, it was really well put together. And again, it was also telling you about how the matriarch is the keeper of culture. I thoroughly enjoyed the episode. My only issue with it is that I felt like we could have put another story in this hour as well because with the whole Essie, I got it. I got it right away. I do feel like that Essie was, we focused on her a lot for this to be Mad Sweeney's coming to America story. And I would have wanted more of Mad Sweeney in the olden days to really get a greater understanding because we get this we get this whole tale of Matt Sweeney through Laura uh, through Essie and it's fine and everything but I I just wouldn't have wanted her to be the main character of this story I really would have liked it to be Matt Sweeney like it has been for the other gods and I also feel like they put so much into this one episode with uh Essie that we're going to miss out on a lot concerning the next episode because the next episode is a season finale and I'm just like are we going to get the war are we going to get uh the old gods coming together like what is going on because the next episode does look good but I'm hoping it's not so much information that we can't all digest it because they spent an hour on a secondary story in my opinion a story that could have been in the first 15 minutes of the show and then we could have dug into something deeper or maybe flipped it and had uh, Matt Sweeney be the lead of his telling of his coming to America story because I would have wanted I wanted to see more of Matt Sweeney and how he got here but I get that gods come here through the beliefs of other people totally understand that but I just feel like this was a kind of a filler drag on episode and then we're going to get all of this meat the last episode and I just I don't know I just feel like I hope it's not 
a lot of information forced into one hour or maybe stars will give them two hours i don't know but I, I this could have been 15 minutes in my opinion but i still enjoyed it and i'm still looking forward to the season finale so if you like what you see here please like comment subscribe and share and i will see you next week for the season finale of american gods bye guys